The quest to 100% Skyrim in Legendary continues. Today's topic, all the new creatures from the Anniversary Edition. So how about we start with... Pets of Skyrim. There should be a note, there it is. For sale. One tamed mountain goat, able to carry a hefty amount of weight to the throat of the world and back again. Gives good milk. If interested in purchasing, see Halvar in Rorikstead. Now, the good news is there is a lot more than just a mountain goat. The other good news, I... we won't be milking anything. Of course. All I need to do is to buy it. For we part price, way with 200 sure. gold and we're gonna go and greet Hilda. Hilda the goat. And I'll uh, actually be using it. Also, goddammit, there's a dragon. So, as per usual, the Dromores do all of the work, Freya helps, and I uh, sit back and relax. It's the best way to do it. Unless you're absolutely insane, and I love my sanity. So Hilda can keep the dragon bones and scales. And let's see, Halvar's journal. Came into town a few days ago looking for work. The folk here are nice enough, and there's plenty of wheat and potatoes needing to be harvested. So, I've got a steady supply of coin coming in. I don't think I'm going to need my old pack goat Hilda for much longer. All my bones are starting to creak, and my adventuring days are long over. Now, I just need to find someone willing to take care of her. Maybe get a few coins for her too. There's strength in those old bones of hers yet. Ah, how I'm going to miss wandering the wilds of Skyrim. I saw so many strange and wonderful things out there. Pine trees, as tall as mountains, old nor tombs. I once even stumbled across a wandering spirit made of pure ice. Even ran across a few folk trying their hand at taming different types of creatures. Don't know why they'd want anything but a loyal dog or a trusty goat like my Hilda, though. Some of them beasts out in the wild just aren't meant to be tamed. Ran across an alchemist with a pet rabbit and almost got robbed by a thief with a tame fox. But I suppose a rabbit or a fox could be docile enough. But that pickpocket trying to train a skeever must have been as mad as old Chio. And I don't want to think too hard about the vampire that... Almost made a meal out of me. Could have sworn it had trained the frostbite spider. Gives me shivers just thinking about it. And obviously, in true Bethesda fashion, that's all we know to know magically where everything is. So, first off, Kranvanger Cave. This is the one with the vampire and the frostbite spider. So, let's just get that one out of the way. All you gotta do is take care of a couple of vampires, not the whole dungeon, mind you. And that pet is gonna be in a cage, so exactly, there's the key, and we also have a journal. There you are. But first, the lore. Let's see what's up. While my siblings may be obsessed with the taste that fear imbues in the blood of mortals, I find that pain lends a much more potent sweetness. And nothing is quite so capable of causing pain as the venom of a frostbite spider. But alas, the usual method of harvesting frostbite venom involves killing the spider. A costly and dangerous venture. Far too little venom can be obtained through violent methods for the experiments I wish to conduct. To that end, I have captured a frostbite spider from deeper in the cave so that I may regularly collect its venom, which seems to be unusually potent. I discovered that it appears to have some measure of intelligence, and I've been attempting to teach it to obey certain orders. Oh, how delicious it would be to have a tamed spider entangle my prey on command. I think I will call it... Arachnia. Hello, buddy. Oh, she's blue. Okay. You're uh, actually not that creepy, so... Tabri's home you go. I'm thinking we'll just send everything Tabri's home, because that ought to be hilarious. Especially since it's the place I'm using for hoarding. Now, the rat way in Riften... Wait. Oh, that's from another quest. Uh, shoo, shoo, go away. Not gonna do you today. Guardian Vault? No. Skeever. Skeever cage. Empty scum of bottles. I don't have the key. Hilda has milk to collect. Oh no, the milk is true. I thought it wasn't. Anyways, let's move on. Big pocket journal. I ain't been having no luck at lifting gold off them rich merchants in the market. And those thief guilds wits don't want me. Said I'm too clumsy. I'm running out of food and skooma. We need to start killing some of the skeevers down here for meat. One of the skooma dealers at the docks told me he knew a guy from Morrowind who trained a Nyx hound to distract his marks. Helped him steal a heaping pile of gold, he said. Don't know if I believe a word of it, but what else am I gonna do? Might as well give it a try. Too bad there ain't any Nyx hounds around here. Plenty of skeevers, though. I'm gonna need to catch some. 
Anyway, for foods, might as well have a go at training them first. And that's... Scritch! Oh, buddy. To Bree's home you go. Have fun on, on your journey. Now, the next one, to the alchemist shack where we'll find... A rabbit. Oh, you don't need to be shy. Hello. What's your name? Thistle? Thistle. Okay. Hey, buddy, are you hungry? There are some carrots there. Find the treats. Well, what if he doesn't like carrots, huh? I don't know, it's Skyrim. Okay, there's a journal. Let's see, notes on the tamed rabbit. The rabbits here seem particularly adept at sniffing out potion ingredients. I recently found one nibbling on my thistle plants and managed to capture it. It is my hope that I will be able to train it to lead me to the most bountiful flora. One week later, the rabbit, which I have decided to name Thistle, in honor of the carefully cultivated plants it managed to destroy, is showing great promise. It has proven to be quite tame and rather intelligent. Getting it to respond to commands, however, can be a bit of a trial. I have resorted to playing it with carrots. Ah, so it was the obvious thing, huh? So, Thistle, wants a treat? Oh, it's not making any noise. Okay. Oh! But Hilda will. Hilda will do that for us. Anyways, to Bree's home. And next, the fox. Sweet roll. Hey, buddy. Oh, no, another dragon. Seriously? Can I? Fast travel without having to find a dragon. Every two or three times. Come on, it takes forever in Legendary. It's not even hard. Especially with Dragon Run and two Dramoras. Anyways, buddy, would you like a treat? Oh, I need to... To find more about the fox. It's called Sweet Roll. It likes Sweet Rolls. So, don't even. That's so obvious. Oh, well. Thief's dead. So, the journal. Let's see what's exactly Sweet Rolls. We knew it. We all knew it. I guess being a Bosmer really does give me away with animals. This little fox wandered up to me today, bowled his brass, and started begging for treats. I didn't have anything on me at the time but a Sweet Roll, and it seemed to like that well enough. I wonder if this gift with animals works on horses. It would make stealing them dead easy. Almost two weeks later, the furry nuisance won't leave me alone. It's been following me everywhere. Even down into the sewers. At least it's quiet enough that it won't alert the guards. Another two weeks later and the fox has a real nose for... Sniffing out valuables. Just this morning, she dug up a silver locket out of the mud. I never would have seen it if she hadn't started bowing at the ground. She must be attracted to shiny things. Can't say I blame her, really. Week later, finding Sweet Roll has turned out to be the best stroke of luck I've had in a while. She's got better eyes and instincts than any thief I've ever met, including Vex. I can't remember the last time my coin purse was this heavy. I'm starting to jingle like a battalion of Imperials when I walk. And again, two weeks later, I think I'll try out this animal taming thing on the... Wolves outside of town. Some of the other thieves have been eyeing me recently. They would think twice about jumping me if I had a wolf at my heels. Anyway, Sweet Roll, would you like a treat? Oh, it has a tiny hiss. Oh, so cute. Okay, uh, to Bree's home you go. And that may conclude Pets of Skyrim, but we still have so much to do. Now, regarding the Nyx Hound, I already have it. But if you go to Solstheim, there's a merchant really close to tell Mithrin that will have it. All you gotta do is buy the deed. I already did, so yes, not sir. really much to do here, but I can show it. Although that's back in Bree's home, obviously. So let's see how everyone's coming along. Yeah, that's the Nyx right there. Oh, Hilda. I'm uh, I'm gonna leave you behind. My, uh, my backpack is empty now. So moving on to the Bee and the Barb in Riften. And we can find a letter to Plexius. It is as you feared. The news here in Riften is troubling on many levels. Now, I've studied goblins all my life, and while customs differ from tribe to tribe, one thing has always held true. They are beholden to their shamans, and removing them will turn the entire tribe docile. Moreover, we have seen this method work in practice, most famously with the Three Feather tribe near Bruma. Yet, still the rumors persist of goblin activity near the border. Most disturbing is the news that the blue god himself is leading them. Could it be Malakath himself in some form? Regardless, if some Daedric being has found its way to this realm, this is a cause for concern. I'll be heading to Grom's Pass in the morning to investigate. Faithfully yours, Avanessa Claudius.
So, let's get a goblin follower, shall we? Grom's pass. And one thing you do not have to worry is fighting the goblins throughout, because your follower will be waiting for you. In fact, he's held captive. Now, these little bros aren't exactly difficult at all. Remember, this is legendary difficulty. Everything takes forever, and I'm not even speeding this one. Oh, and there's also those blue mushrooms. So, guess you, you got a new item? Anything else for me? Eh, that's very, very good. Anyways, that's the blue god himself. Not that I need anything to worry about. Uh, most fights usually just go like this. I'll just, I'll just show you the whole thing. The Dromoras are taking care of everything else, and Paralysis takes care of whatever I decide to do to pass the time. Really, that's it. So, the journal. Day 1. The tribe demanded I prove myself as a hunter. They want me to trap some game and return to the stronghold. Probably for a celebratory feast. It shouldn't be too hard. I already set up a snare by the water. Now I can just sit back and let the food come to me. Day 2. My snare trap doesn't seem to be working. I tied it to a stick, just like they said. Clearly, Lob gave me a flimsy rope. Either that or the sticks out here are no good. I don't know how they expect me to hunt with such broken tools. Day 3. It's only been a few days, but I already feel like giving up. I'm hungry and I've gone through all the bread Atub gave me. By Malakoth, they really expect me to die out here. Day 5. The rabbits here are too nimble to chase down. I thought I could just grab one if I put some bait in my pockets, but problem is, I don't have any bait. Shouldn't have eaten all the carrots in my sack, but I was starving. Day 6. Malakoth's blessings. I'm alive. I found a cave south of my camp full of strange blue mushrooms, which I immediately ate. I remember... I ate up saying something about mushrooms being poisonous, but I didn't get sick. So, what does she know? Anyways, I ended up filling my sack with them. If I come back with a full stomach, maybe I can convince others we don't need to hunt. Day 7. I came back to Largashpur with my sack full of mushrooms, and one by one they spit them out and mocked my hunting skills. If that wasn't humiliating enough, Chief Yamars took a hammer and crushed the sack, then dumped the contents on my head. None of my tribe mates bothered to defend me. They just stood there and laughed. Now, Yamar says I have to go back out there and catch something with some legs. It's not fair. When was the last time he caught anything? Day 8. I'm so hungry. Hunting is impossible. Maybe I'll just die. That'll teach him to leave me out here alone. Day 9. By Malakath, what just happened? I went back to the cave to pick some more mushrooms when something must have tripped me because I fell into a pit. I yelled out for help, but instead of getting rescued, I was quickly surrounded by a horde of green monsters, hissing and gnashing their teeth. I figured that was it, they were going to eat me. But before I could scream, one of them dropped to his knees and started bowing. The others followed. Could they be goblins? You never see them this far north. In any case, they seem to be treating me like an honored guest. Day 11. Blessings of Malakath. It turns out they think I am a god. They don't seem to treat the other orcs the same, so it must be the blue stains on my face. I need to thank Yamars for dumping that sack on my head. I think I'll do that right before I have my goblin's claw open his face. Day 15. My army grows by today. Soon we'll have enough numbers to overrun the stronghold. For now, I have them collecting blue mushrooms from Cyrodiil so I can maintain the ruse. Although, some of them might be starting to suspect. The other day, I think one of them saw me use a stick to spread blue paint on my back. I'll need to keep a close eye on him. Day 18. I figured out who it was that saw me. It's that nasty little runt with the funny-looking spear. It seems he's the hunter of the group. He reminds me of every orc back at Largashpur who laughed in my face. I tried to grab the spear from him, but he must have done something to it because it was too heavy to lift. I don't know if it's her sin or Malakath that's protecting him, but he needs to learn that goblins only have one god. The blue god. Me. Day 21. The tunnel the goblins were using to come here from Cyrodiil collapsed. No matter, my army is nearly big enough to take the stronghold, and once that's done, I can sell Yamars things for a whole wagon. Full of paint. Before I do that though, I need to make an example of the non-believer. 
Once he's dealt with, it'll show all the other goblins what happens when you question your god. Jesus, man, just have him read your whole book. That'll be punishment enough. Cool story, but doesn't need to go on forever. <laughs> At least in text, you know. Now, Gog, come with. And actually come with. I won't be sending him to Bree's home. At least, not on this one. Now. To Markarth and to call Selmo for a dwarven armored mudcrab. And much like the Nyx Hound, for example, all we need to do is to buy the deed. So I just need to find it, send the thing to Breeze home, and that will be it for the mudcrab. Right, it should be in books, my bad. Ownership deed. Indeed. Okay. Oh, shut up, call Selmo. Okay, so wait for me at home. Breeze home. Thank you so much. Oh, and there it goes. Next stop, Dawnstar, for a very Christmassy well, Easter hello. egg. And this one is not Take just a, a reindeer as a horse, it's also some apparel. Nearly 800 for the bill of sale, but that's okay. Also bought the gear, and uh, let's see how everything fits. It is called Saturalia, but am I messing up Pagan God's references, or shouldn't it be Saturnalia? As in Saturn? Ah, whatever. Who cares? Unicorns! That's much cooler. It is pretty easy to find. However, the mini game, if you can call it such, heck, if it exists. Wild horses will buck until tamed. Stay mounted until they submit. If you are thrown, try again. Once tamed, you can add a saddle and rename them at any stable. And when changing horses, because yeah, there's more than the unicorn, they'll go back to whatever you found them in. Now, I don't know about you, but I couldn't but press the walking keys. So, in my case, W, A, S, and D. Kind of like we used to press either A or B in Pokemon, uh, even though it did nothing. But yeah, otherwise, <laughs> you have this awful animation. Awful, because it's... Well, simply because it takes forever, but eventually, it's completed. However... The unicorn is only the introduction. You can go to any stables and buy a wild horse so map. Quick. And that will bring of up course. several. It's not just three. Of course. Now let me just test the saddle. I'll go with... Oh, Dark Brotherhood seems nice. Yeah, I'll take that. Let's see. I might need to use candlelight because this lighting... Oh, it's awful. Yeah, for sure. Oh, there we go. There's the hand. And yeah, 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 it's exactly like sure. the banner. So now, can I change the name? Horse has been renamed, that's not what I meant. It said Unicorn, now it's Scotty. Mm. Oh, I didn't want a... Of course. I didn't want a pre-chosen name. Okay, Spotted Grey, Dapple Brown, Chestnut, Red, Spotted White, Pale Mare, and Black. We've got the location for every single one, and even though they recommend Detect Life, I uh, do not. I recommend watching a walkthrough. Although, to be reasonable, you might only need it for the spotted white. Everything else is just look around a bit and you'll find it. But I'll just let you know. So, for that one, when you go to Shore Stone, just keep going downhill. And then go downhill some more. And eventually there's a sharp left you don't want to take. Instead, you go down some more and it'll show up. The other thing is, Dapple Brown, Chestnut, and Rev might have all been done by a Daltonic person. Either that, or someone that loves shades and tones of exactly the same thing. I mean, I'm not exactly expecting a green or a blue horse, but come on. Put some color in them. We finally got the Dalmatian to work. So let's move on to the Pale Mare now. And one thing I heavily recommend is to not be facing... Uh, downwards. <laughs> Plain terrain is the best. Otherwise, the animation takes even longer, but we have successfully tamed every single one. And I refuse to butcher any more names. Oh, shut up, Dromori, not the time. However, let Sleeping Wolves lie. This one adds. Ah, uh, how should I describe it? Zombie Wolves. Very bony. Meatless, uh, good boys. They are strong too. At least as enemies. I don't know if they're as bulky as allies, but probably. Wolf Key Cage, as usual, and the Necromancer Journal. 
This is truly remarkable. Through my experiments with these undead bulls, I have discovered a method to increase my power by consuming their totems. Objects that bind them between life and death itself, I can bind their spirits to my own life force. I have already consumed two totems and their hosts are now completely under my control. But this is not enough, I need a third totem to be sure. Except that's very obviously when we interrupt and this beauty, the bone wolf, can come with us. To breeze home! Obviously. I, uh, I might have to rehouse them at some point or another. Now for the last creatures that the anniversary edition adds that we can, well, not really recruit in this case, but summon, we are presented with zombies. And do not let them fool you, just look at that. Takes a long time. Also, don't let the location fool you either, because there is, uh, well, it's not really a horde. It's just a fuck ton of them. At least for legendary difficulty uh, context. So, we take care of everything. They take care of everything. I'm just using the bow not to get bored. <laughs> Truly. And we have two spells. Conjure Zombie and Conjure Foul Zombie. So, let me just go over the last journal and then we'll watch that. An apprentice of mine recently discovered an ancient tomb in a forgotten cavern during a gathering expedition. This tomb is like nothing I've seen in a very long time. I believe it's a conjuration spell of some sort, but I cannot be certain. I'll need to spend some time deciphering this. It could be quite valuable to do so. Two weeks later, it's just as I suspected. It is indeed a conjuration spell. However, the creature summoned is especially vicious, an undead zombie of wonderfully putrid potency that appears to be much more active in the late night hours. I'm not stopping now, I plan to create an even more powerful version of this spell. As Molag Bal as my witness, I shall have a zombie horde at my command before long. Last entry. Nothing could have prepared me for the power I am about to wield. The whole of my training has been for this moment, since my apprentices and I shall perform a ritual to likes uh, of which has not been seen in centuries and bring forth an undead army. Powerful and willing to do my bidding, its power will radiate across Skyrim, bringing forth waves of undead from the darkness. The time is at hand. Now I'll just showcase both spells and this might be a good time for me to leave it here. On the next ones, since it's gonna be huge, I'm gonna go through every single apparel, gear, weapon, you name it. And I'd like to give a big shout out to Steve Whittle and to John Walker for their support of the channel and to you. So, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, I hope I'll see you on the next one, and I hope you have a good one. What a cutie. Bye.